our next read strategy, and that is embedded topics. This is going to be a very handy feature for you in the long run. Um, many clients appreciate this feature. Embedding is actually placing another topic inside of a topic object. So uh, just like you would place a graphic or a hyperlink inside of the topic object, you would actually embed another topic object inside of a topic. The reason why this feature is so wonderful is because it's a great way for you to reuse commonly occurring content within other topics. So let's say, for example, you've got some common notes, cautions, tips, or warnings inside of your documentation. They seem to show up in multiple chapters, multiple books, multiple document sets, always the same note, caution, tip, or warning. All right, well, if that's the case, instead of always having the author type out that paragraph or copying and pasting it all the time, you can place that reusable paragraph inside of its own topic object and then embed that paragraph in the location that you would like it to display in. Now, the beauty of that is let's say that at some point that note, caution, tip, or warning has to change. Well, you only change it in the original topic object. And then everywhere where that topic has been embedded, it's automatically updated for you. You don't have to do a search to find all the locations. You don't have to manually copy and paste it everywhere or manually retype in that paragraph. You can just simply embed that topic inside of another one. And it's a, it's a great safety feature for you, basically taking some insurance out on your content to make sure that it is standardized across multiple chapters, books, docs, sets, and so on. All right. An embedded topic can be as big or as small as you'd like it to be. It can be several paragraphs, part of a paragraph, a sentence, part of a sentence. It can stand alone if you wanted to. It can just be a fragment of content if you wanted to. It's completely up to you and uh, what the size of your embedded topic should be. All right, so here's an example of an embedded topic. All right, so what we've done in this case is embedded this liability disclaimer inside of our topic called setting the target site. Now, you know that this paragraph has been embedded because it has gray shading on it. Gray shading is a visual clue to know that that content is embedded. If you were to click in this content, you couldn't actually change it. It's non-modifiable. But you can double-click on the gray shading to open up the original object and then make your changes to it if you wanted to. Now, how did this content get in to the setting the target site? Just simply by clicking and dragging that topic object into your setting the target site topic. All right, so we'll go back to our handy click and drag feature in order to use embedding. Now, one thing to point out is notice the heading of the embedded topic is not in the container topic. What happens when you embed is you only get the body of the topic object. You do not get the heading and the body. Okay, so the, the heading does not get included. If for some reason you did want the heading here, you would need to actually uh, type it in uh, to this topic or type the heading into the body of the embedded topic in order for it to display in the container. All right, so let's take a look at some uses for embedding. One uh, common uh, reason for embedding topics is, let's say that you wanted two topic objects that have the same exact content, but two different topic headings. All right, let's say, for example, that this Our Story topic displays on our website but the About Acme topic displays in our user manuals. 
All right, we want the same content to display, but because of the medium that we're displaying that content in, we want the headings to be different. So what we've done here is created two topic objects, put in their unique topic headings, and then embedded our story into About Acme. And you know it's embedded here because of the gray shading. So that's one way of using embedding topics. Another reason for using embedding topics is for layering your content. Let's say that uh, you are creating documentation for multiple levels of authors or users, excuse me, where you've got your beginner, intermediate, and your advanced user. Or let's say, for example, a getting started guide, a user manual, and a system administrations guide. All right, where your audience get more and more technical and perhaps need more and more information in order to complete their tasks. So what we've done here is actually set up multiple levels of embedding inside of our library. We still have three topic objects, one for beginner, one for intermediate, and one for advanced. Now what we've done is embedded the beginner content into the introduction area of the intermediate topic. And then below the embedded beginner text, we have entered in the intermediate specific information. In our advanced topic, we have embedded the intermediate topic into the introductory area. And then underneath the embedded content, we have then entered in the information that's specific to our advanced level users. Now if you think about it, there's actually two levels of embedding going on in this section because the beginner is embedded into the intermediate here in our advanced topic. And that is perfectly fine. You can have multiple levels of embedding going on inside of your documentation. You know, Authorit doesn't uh, really care about how many levels of embedding that you have going on inside of your content. So let's take a look at actually embedding some content in our library. Now what I'm going to do is create a common uh, warning that may display in our content. I'm going to go ahead and create that common warning in our common content area. I'm going to create a new folder called Notes and Warnings. And in this Notes and Warnings folder in my library, I have those commonly occurring notes, tips, warnings, and what have you. So I'm just going to create a new topic object here. All right. Let's call this my teleportation warning. And the template doesn't necessarily matter in this case unless I plan on using this topic uh, as a standalone topic and as an embedded topic. All right, because what happens when you embed the content is that whatever the container to uh, topics template is, is the one that uh, controls the formatting for this text. So now let's go ahead and add in my content here. Warning. Children and pregnant women should not time travel. All right, we'll save that and go ahead and close. Now let's go to my X1000 user guide and let's go ahead and find a good place to reuse that warning. Let's say that I want that warning to display after my X1000 description here. Let's give myself some room on the screen. What I want to do is create an empty paragraph marker to uh, insert that content into. And then I'm going to use my click and drag option. Where I'm going to select that text, drag it into my blank paragraph marker, and let go of the mouse. Now, author had asked me what I'd like to do. Do you want to paste the contents of that warning as text here, or would you like to embed? In this case, I want to 
in bed. Now when I do that, the contents of that topic is now embedded inside of my X1000 description. Now I can click in here and try to uh, type in it, but it's not going to let me make any changes. But I can double click on the gray shading and that will display the uh, original topic and I can actually make changes to it from here if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and apply some styles to it. Okay, and now that styling displays in this embedded topic. So if I wanted that warning to display in other locations, same thing. Go to that location. Let's enter in a new line here. Let's change the formatting on that. All right, now what I want to do is embed. So I need to go to the location of that topic and embed it into my paragraph. Select Embed, and we'll go ahead and save. All right. Now if I do a show relationships on that object, I now see it has been reused in two different locations inside of my library now. All right, so that topic in this case was just a warning. It could be as, as large as a, an entire procedure if you wanted to. The size of the embedded topic doesn't really matter in this case. All right, the, the size of it is completely up to you and uh, whatever your purposes are for reusing that content. But the procedure for reusing it is to just simply create that topic and then click and drag it into your container topic. All right, and that will reuse that object so that if that object was updated, it would automatically be updated in every location that it's been used in. All right.